in a perfect manner and take charge of your posts. And you must keep alert, woman, and observe everything within sight or hearing that will damage your mind because your mind is the laboratory that produces the new world. You listen good now. This means that the woman's prayers, her heart prayers to God, when you cry out to God because you're in trouble, when you cry out to him because the man is gone and you are pregnant, these prayers that you cry out to God, they impress themselves on the brain of your child. No, you didn't hear me. The more, the stronger your thoughts are, and the more continuous your thoughts are, they resemble a printing press. And you stamp out an impression on the mind of the forming fetus. So the body and the mind is like a blank piece of paper that you, mother, are the first one to write on. And whatever you write is permanent. This is why the scholars look at women as God's assistant. A co-creator with God. Oh, you didn't hear me. Oh, brother and sister, let's help me get through this one today. Because I'm so full. And if Allah just bless me to just get this one out. <laughs> you can handle it. <laughs> I'll get me some rest after I get it out. <laughs> Look now. The life led by the pregnant woman is the preparation of the paper, the mind. Her thoughts and desires stamp the mind right on the paper. Unseen what you are making. But oh, after it is writ, you cannot take back what you have produced. Only God can put his hand over your destructive work and bring something good out of something that is prepared for death. Are you all right? Now I'm going a little deeper. I want you to follow me. Yes, Thought, will, and desire. What have we been working on on the study guides? Thought, desire, will. This has the power to impress the forming child with the power of good or evil. Yes. So the parents are responsible for properly preparing themselves for parenthood. It's got to start now, but who cares? Who's concerned? Nobody teaches you this. Nobody makes you responsible in your young years for the destruction of your bodies and your minds. Who cares? Muhammad does. Look, second, we are responsible not only for preparing ourselves for parenthood, but we're responsible for arranging the proper conditions and environment which is called prenatal development. We're responsible for living properly as regards rest and food and exercise and especially the proper mental attitudes that conquer emotional stresses. We're responsible for recognizing the fact that impressions during pregnancy shape the destiny of the offspring for good or evil yes. and for the good and future of the nation 
as a whole. So when you get a woman pregnant, and when she says, honey, I'm pregnant, you say to her, bitch. Yeah, I, I know what I said. I say it again, bitch. Because that's the way he talked. What the hell is wrong with you? Don't you know how to protect yourself? And you don't see the man no more? You pregnant? How you react? Oh my God, what am I going to do? I'm pregnant. Oh, oh God. I don't, who can I, who am I going to tell? My mom is going to kill me. My, my, mom, my mom is going to kill me. If, you, if there's a daddy at home, it's, oh, gee. my daddy, oh, God. So, you tell your friend, what can I do? Say, well, there's an abortion clinic down the street. Oh, I, I don't know what I can do there. Well, maybe sit in hot water, to, to take this pill, or do this. Now, look at you, look, mother. You start lying right now. You lying to yourself to deny what is in. Are you pregnant? Oh no, not me, mom. Not me. Did you have your message this month? Yes, ma'am, I had it. <laughs> then you say, oh hell, I, I gotta do something. Take, take quinine. Somebody said, quinine, quinine. Get some quinine. You sit in the hot tub and, and till it come down. Do, do, do this. Oh hell, get a, get a, Get a hanger, do something. Yes. What do you become, woman? A murderer and a liar. A liar and a murderer. Lying and murdering is going on in the darkness while you're fashioning life and you wonder why your children are liars and murderers today because on the island of Pilon, on the island of Pilon, The Honorable Elijah Muhammad taught us about Yakub and how the devil was made. And when he got him on the island, every laborer that worked to form the white race was a liar and a murderer. So that lying and murdering was right in the nature of the child that was produced on the island of Pilon. Why did you teach that, Elijah? I taught it so you can know that every time a baby is in the womb, you are secreted away in your own special island. You can make it a liar and a murderer, a devil, or you can make it a god. Yes, it is in your power, the brown germ and the black germ. Yes. It's only in the negative and positive qualities. Yeah. If you want a positive child, you got to eliminate the negative. And if you feed on the negative and graft on the negative and kill the positive, you will produce the end result, a murderer, a liar, a child born with the propensity to kill. And it will kill its own parents. It will rob its own parents. It will deceive its own parents. I ain't talking about color, white or black. I'm talking about the nature of the womb. Yakub. The white man is born into the world a liar and a murderer. So Jesus said, I beheld your father when he fell from heaven. He was a liar from the beginning and abode not in the truth. He was a murderer and the lust of your father you shall do. Why did you say that, Jesus? He said, I know you. How do you know him, Jesus? I know you from the womb. I know how you were formed. Therefore, I know the nature of you. Huh? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. That's why the white man can't help himself. 
He's a liar and a murderer. He has wreaked more havoc on the earth than any people in the annals of history because of what went on on the island of Pilon or Patmos in your Bible while he was being made. And that is to teach you the value of a woman and the value of her womb. That whatever is going on in her and around her while she is fashioning life is helping to make that child what it is. Look how you talk, woman. I got one in the oven. What you mean I'm cooking? What you cooking, baby? <laughs> is it an angel food cake? Or is it a devil food cake? What, what you making in there? Now let me tell you something. Many women, after they find they're pregnant, they hate the fact that they are pregnant. Yes. They're embittered mm. that the man made them pregnant. So, they reject the life. I don't want it. I can't stand the fact that I'm looking like this in my beautiful shape. The men used to whistle at me when I walked down the street because of my beautiful shape. And now that no good, he did this to me. You think more of shape than the shape of your mind. How crazy you have been made, sister. Look now, you hate the child because the father didn't turn on the natural wellspring of your love. You hate the child because the father didn't turn on the natural wellspring of your love. Since you didn't want to be pregnant, it was an accident that took place out of passion. You hate the fact that you are, and therefore hatred leads to murder. And what you impress upon the child that comes forth is, I don't want you, I don't like you, I wish to destroy you. So when the child comes into the world, the child don't even realize why it has these feelings of self-rejection. Look at these black children. What happened to you? You don't like yourself. What happened to you? You don't like your hair. Yes, sir. What happened to you? That nobody can even tell you something good about yourself without you thinking they're pulling a the game on you. It's because your own mothers rejected you in the womb. And now, even though you are grown, you continue to practice self-rejection, self-hatred. And you subtly are a murderer of your own self. And that's why you engage in self-destructive habits in the name of having a good time. You get drunk, killing yourself. You get high, killing yourself. You have no value in your own eyes. 
So it's so difficult for anybody to try to get you to see and put a value on yourself. You are potential murderers. You are bombs ready to explode. All it needs is a little tap. Nigga, you sitting on my car. I'll blow your so-and-so. Yes, sir. Hey? Yes, sir. Nigga, what? What you looking at me for? What you looking at me for? Oh. Reaching in your pocket. What's wrong with you, man? Can I look at you? <laughs> Ain't you my brother? Nigga, I had that parking space. Nigga, get your sons. I got that parking space. Get my gun. Mm. That's right. Look at you. You are a nation of little murderers. Just waiting for the right circumstance. You're marked with vileness and bitterness. That's why you can suck up rap songs that are filthy and low down. Because you were conceived with a low down, filthy thought at the base of you. This is why you can do the acts that you do and we do on one another because you were conceived with the passion of adultery and lust and fornication and debauchery. So much deeper than what I'm saying. And I can't even deliver it right because I'm so filled with it I can't divorce the strength of my own emotion from the wisdom of the message. But I hope you can understand what I'm saying. That it must be generally accepted that if there is to be a real reformation of the world, if ever the millennium of purity and chastity and righteousness and peace and justice are to be achieved on this earth, it will result from correctly, wisely, and rationally directed parental laws. It will result from mothers who understand that they are co-creators with God. They are God's assistants in creating a better world. And where there are no decent women, there can never be a decent man. And where women are hurled down, men can never be lifted up. So the destiny of the individual, the destiny of the race, the destiny of the nation depends upon the mother and the prenatal conditions arranged for her child. If the development or propagation of the species, if undertaking knowingly and understandingly, the father and the mother working harmoniously with each other can do more to foster the reforms so urgently needed in the world than all of the social institutions combined. There is no reform school. There is no prison. There is no penal institution that can reform nothing. And this is why to undertake to reform something that has already been made wrong. There has to be a special redemption. Yeah. Are you listening to me? And a special redeemer. I'm almost finished. The woman, if true to her feminine nature, is really an advance over the man. Not because of her beauty, not because of her accomplishments, or even the nature of her love when correctly awakened, but because she possesses the womb. The laboratory wherein are fashioned those who will inhabit the world where she co-operates, co-operates with or is an assistant to Allah in the formation and the reformation and the final completion of the human being. So there is no reformation without the reform of a woman. And how do you reform something that has been rejected from birth. It's a good thing that God has given us the nature to submit and the nature to rebel. Because 
if I did not rebel against the circumstances into which I was born, I could never be what I am today. Because my mother tried to kill me when I was a child, a baby in her womb. She did not know what she was carrying. She regrets that to this day and she tells me as she goes into the valley of death, she begs the pardon of God for trying to kill this which was in the womb. But she mocked me with her own thinking. And this is what led to my fall from the Honorable Elijah Muhammad. Because even though the Honorable Elijah Muhammad said so many good things to me about myself, I couldn't believe it because my mother rejected me in the womb. And so this rejection in the womb leads not to self-denial, but to a self-negation. When you get older, you cannot accept yourself. You do not love yourself. You do not want yourself. So you easily become somebody else. And that's why you can call yourself a Cuban, a Mexican, an Arab, or any damn body else, except who you are, because you reject yourself. I thank Allah that a wise God puts his hand over a mother who, though good and wonderful in her ignorance, set a mark on her child. But Allah said, no, I'm going to give him the will to overcome his mother and her thinking when she was forming him in her womb. I'm going to give him the will to say, I rebel against that. And so as a young boy, no matter what she said, I said, I'll show him. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. As a child, I said, I'll show you, mama. The world will respect me one day. I'll show you. And because I was determined to overcome the circumstances of my birth, yes, sir. I am where I am by the help of God. But what about you? You can't give up on life and say, well, we had a bad circumstance. My poor mother didn't want me. Oh, I'm, I, I'm this way in the world. And I, oh, what the hell? I commit suicide and walk around the street with your head down hung like you can't make a difference. You can't change reality. It is will and thought that can reverse the whole process. It is a new thought that can even rearrange the gen genetic structure. And that's why God says, I make a new thing today. Come in the midst of the old and say, I'm going to make you reborn again. How can I be reborn? How can I go back in my mother's womb for the second time? He said, wheresoever the wind listed. You don't know where it comes or where it goes, but Jesus was telling Nicodemus, you must be born again. Now, you got to bear me witness, because we are the witness of the truth, man, of a people destroyed. Now, as we close this down, <laughs> as we close this down, how we relate to circumstances surrounding our pregnancy determines certain character traits in the child. This is called prenatal influence. <clears throat> Here was Eve given to Adam. The serpent deceives Eve. She eats his teaching, or whatever it was that she ate. Yes, sir. She feeds it to Adam. They fall. Now they have children. Ah. The duality is present now. Yes, sir. He made them good. Satan made them depart from good. Yes. Now they produce children. Cain and Abel, coming out of the same womb, Two children with two different dispositions. Mm. Look at it now. Yes. 
Right now, you, you can't produce one, two, three, four, five. Turn them out like a, like a cookie cutter. This is a great giant. This is another great giant. This is another one. Oh, this is another. Ha, ha, ha. Here they come. Here they come, a giant every time. No, you hit and miss. You produce a good one, four bad ones. You produce a good one and a, and a real bad one and a, and a good one and a real bad one, a mediocre one and a degenerate yes, and a good yes. one. Look at, look, look, look at the Bible now. Look at the Bible. Y'all all right? Yes, sir. Eve produces Cain and Abel. These are two brothers from the same womb with different characteristics. One of them has tenderness and heart for God. See, that's when Adam was in his right mind. So that right mind thought was there, and at the roll of the dice, out came Abel. But the next time, out came Cain. And here's Cain and Abel. Cain sees Abel getting ahead. Cain says, I don't dig this. So he becomes jealous of his brother. Envy leads to hatred. Hatred leads to murder. So he murders his righteous brother and covers him up. And that's what goes on every day. The seed of good and evil is in you. But when the good tries to come on up, the evil of yourself, which is so developed because of the thoughts that went into your makeup, you crush out the good in yourself and bury the good. You kill your brother and bury him. You look on the world scene today. When a messenger or prophet comes up, he brings the best out and the worst out at the same time. (laughs) There are those who go along with the prophet. You see them trying to better their lives. Then there are those who hate the prophet, jealous of the success of the prophet. So then they raise up a group of people that they infect with their poison against the prophet. But what is at the root of it? At the root of it is envy. At the root of that envy is the thought that went into the formation of them when they were being made. This is why anybody that teaches religion, good God Almighty, I want you to listen to me good. Yes, sir. Jesus said, it is not the circumcision of the foreskin of the penis, but it is the circumcision of the heart. What do we mean? When you circumcise the penis, you cut off the foreskin which hides the debris that in a dark place where it is dark and damp, there's a multiplication of bacteria. So in order to clean a penis that has not been circumcised, you have to pull back the foreskin to keep it clean. Otherwise, during the act of procreation, that dirty mass of bacteria will be injected into the woman even as the life germ is injected. Death-dealing bacteria is also injected at the same time. What does that mean on the spiritual or metaphysical level? It means that the heart that preaches the word of God, that preaches the word of God out of envy and jealousy and hatred for his brother, that is a heart that is corroded with disease. So when the word of God comes out of the mouth, the word comes out, but the poison comes out with the word. Let me give you a very clear example of, of what I'm speaking. Come on, give us a clear yes, sir. What if Dean Muhammad, yes, who is the son of the Honorable Elijah Muhammad, evidently has a problem with his father? So even though he is a profound teacher of wisdom, yet when the wisdom comes out, which may be pure, it becomes contaminated with the poison of his rejection, dislike, and problem with his father. So he produces a community that rejects his father. 
rejects his father not because they know his father, not because his father did anything wrong to them, but they reject him because of the poison of a word spoken from a heart that was diseased. The difference when I speak to you, I don't speak to you with malice in my heart for where is Dean or for my brothers and sisters. I speak to you with the hope in my heart that the word will regenerate life in you and bring you up to that life. That is because the heart of the speaker is washed with the prayers and his hopes and aspirations toward purity so that he keeps cleaning himself and God keeps helping him to clean himself. Yes. And that's why in the Holy Quran Allah says arise and warn. Thy Lord do magnify thy garments do purify and uncleanness do shun. Because if you do not purify your heart from hatred and malice, bitterness and resentment then you create a womb that will produce children after your warped, your warped, hateful, bitter articulation of the word of God. And this is why we had to grow up. Because you cannot preach the word of God with a heart filled with hatred for the white man. Allah says he is the beneficent and the merciful. And whenever hatred starts entering into your communication, then you bring up children to that emotion which poisons absolutely the word of God. So people cannot see the word of God in its proper dimension simply because we, the speaker of it, are immature in our representation of the beneficent. Because the wicked one that is here is only here by the permission of a God. And therefore, when you see the wicked one and your desire, you hate him and your desire to kill him and all of that, that comes out in your word. Therefore, you poison the very word itself. And this is why the messenger of God said it is expedient for you that I go away. I've taught you, I've given you a base, but I'm going away now. And I'm going away so that you can grow up into that word and a mature expression of that word. And now I come to the conclusion. In the Bible and in Christian theology, Mary is elevated to a very high position. In fact, in the Catholic Church, we hear the saying, Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us now. Pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Holy Mary, blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Now, the Islamic scholars and teachers, based upon the Quran, reject the exaltation of Mary right. to a position of worship. Right. And they're right. But in rejecting that aspect of Christology, they also reject something of wisdom in it that just has been exaggerated and put out of proper context. So they go to the extreme in not only rejecting Mary, the mother of God, but they reject womanhood. Yes. 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 Make it plain. Now what is it all about? What is it all about? In the Quran, Mary is given a communication. I know it. I, I know it's long. I, I, I know that. No, 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 no. I, I, I know that. A subject like this can't be taught in 10 minutes, you know. Maybe I could have, but I think you would have missed so much. 
and I have covered so little of what I am learning on this subject till it's embarrassing to me to give you something like this. But I hope that you will at least study what you have heard yes, sir. and God will fill in the rest. But in conclusion, God communicated to Mary in the Quran and told Mary when she was a young girl, I, through an angel, I give you good news of a son that is to be born. I can read it for you. This is very significant to me. Allah said to Mary, I am only a bearer of a message of thy Lord. This is an angel talking to Mary. That I will give you a pure boy. And Mary said, how can I have a son? And no mortal has yet touched me, nor have I been unchaste. He said, so it will be. Thy Lord says, it is easy to me, and that we may make him a sign to men and a mercy from us, and it is a matter already decreed. Now, by God telling Mary in advance she was going to have a pure boy, Mary drew aside from her family and screened herself from them in preparation for what she was going to bring on to the world. Mary is a woman that has to be studied. And this is why she is given the 19th chapter of the Quran as the chapter called Miriam, and the word, the number 19, is that secret number which unfolds the secret of God. And to understand the secret of God, you have to understand Mary and the womb. Yes. Oh, Lord. Ah, <laughs> uh, well. You know, I, I just fear that some things get a little bit too much, you know. You begin to look at me like a cow. <laughs> and instead of you saying amen, you, you begin to say moo in a minute. <laughs> and then I know you had enough. <laughs> and if you can just get this last piece, you can go home. Now look, if Mary and Elizabeth, these are two women mentioned in the Bible and the Quran, Elizabeth was the mother of John, yes. and Mary was the mother of Jesus. They are related to each other, and one is six months older than the other. A lot of wisdom in this. But both of these, the father was instructed for John and the mother was instructed for Jesus but Elizabeth was a woman that grew up in the temple Mary was a woman that grew up under the law of Moses see you got it what are you seeing at MGT and GCC In the Quran, Allah says to Zacharias, this boy, there never was a boy like him before. He's going to be a good one. He don't let the, Zacharias, Zacharias wasn't going to have him pregnant. Zacharias wasn't going to carry him. Elizabeth was going to carry him. So Elizabeth had to be a good woman with a good thought in her mind to produce this kind of child for God. Mary had to be one heck of a woman. 
Mary said, look at this, my soul doth magnify, glorify the Lord. Look at this. Here the very essence of this woman is she was God-fearing. Now look, according to the scholars, the brain of the child is fashioned by the thoughts, desires, and blood of the mother. The brain. She makes brain. She makes brawn. Don't you see why we should be careful how we handle her brothers? She's making the brain of your future and mine. She's doing this. Now look at this. Mary is called the mother of God. That's not wrong. That's right. Because if David says in the Psalms, ye are all God's children of the most high God. Proverbs said, a wise child maketh a glad father, but a foolish child is the heaviness of its mother. Right. And then the Bible again said, train up the child in the way it should go. And when it is old, it will not depart from that. Then the trainer and the teacher, the shaper and the molder is you. So what is in you, mother, is what's going to be in your child. And since you make his brain, then what does your brain constantly think about? Is it the soap opera? Uh -oh. You making a baby. Hold it, baby. Hold it now. Let's put her on the general hospital. Yes. <laughs> all my children. That's all. Yes. Now you call your friend. Yes, honey. And that, that woman murdered that man. See, you thinking about murder? You thinking about all these negative things while you producing a new life. It's better to turn off the TV. Why are you pregnant? Don't go to no movies. And hear somebody saying MF and FU and you SOB and you looking at death and murder and mayhem and you bringing your pregnant wife and little babies that you nursing or don't nurse. I mean, this, this white man has committed crimes against humanity when he commits a crime against a woman. A crime against a woman is a crime against humanity. A crime against a woman is almost an unpardonable sin because you are erasing, messing up a co-operator with God in the procreation of human life. And now I leave you. It requires a great woman to become a superior mother. In many respects, most of the truly great men resemble their mothers in temperament and adaptability. The qualities of a great woman, it's not that she has a lot of force and, and all of this over a man. The quality of a great woman is that she loves deeply and unselfishly. The quality of a great woman is that she serves with joy. The quality of a great woman is that she feels good as a sweetheart, a good wife, a good mother, a good grandmother, a real companion to her husband. Over and above all the other great qualities of a woman, the greatest quality that she has is love. And this is why Mary is exalted and called the mother of God. And if a woman knows how to mother, she can produce a child in the image and the likeness of God. Yes, sir. So as you get yourself ready, first thing you got to do is weed out your garden. Mm. Pluck up the things from yourself that you know will not be good for your child to feed on in your mind. Bitterness, envy, jealousy, hatred, vile behavior that comes from vile thoughts. You got to make a sacrifice and get rid of that if you want to produce a child for God. You must clean up your body. You must begin to say, uh-uh, smoking is not good for me. 
and it's not good for my future, what shall I do? Even though it's habit forming, cast the cigarette away. Cast the alcohol away. Cast the crack and the dope and the pills and the unnecessary drugs. And this daily cooking with allowing someone else to cook your meals with a lot of chemical preservatives in it. If you're going to make a child, you got to start by purifying your body, which is to receive the seed of life. Get your womb together. Get your, this womb and this womb. Both wombs work together, cooperating with God for the resuscitation, reformation, regeneration, and procreation of human life. Dear woman, make a serious choice for a man. Don't you run around spreading your legs to every man that knocks on the door of your leg and say, open sesame. You better keep them legs closed and examine that man's mind to see whether he is worthy of you. Because what you see is just about what you get. You better listen, sister. You better listen. I'm almost finished, it's okay. When you are about to conceive, you plan this. You plan it now because you are sick of the world. You're sick of what the world has produced. You want a better life. So you warm up the love in your wife by treating her like the woman you know she is. She's the co-operator with God. She is your future. She is your connection to the future. So when you tell her you love her, you're saying, I love my future. When you handle her right, you're saying, I love my future. I'm handling my future right. Every time you handle a woman right, you're handling your future right. When you're kind to her, you're kind to your future. When you're loving to her, you're loving to your future. When she and you decide this is the time we want to produce a child, you lay down in the bed in the name of God. Not filled with lust and passion, though that is a part of it. But God has to be in your consciousness. And you must think, woman, that you wish and desire to bring forth a child on this earth, male or female, that will make a difference in this world. Think about it. Pray for it. And when you say your prayers, you repeat these powerful attributes of Allah. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. In the name of Allah, the beneficent, the merciful. Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alameen. Praise be to Allah, the Lord, nourisher, sustainer, and evolver of creation to its eventual perfection. Ar-Rahman, Ar-Rahim, the beneficent, the merciful. Maliki Yawmiddin, master of the day of judgment. I want to produce a master. I want to produce one who masters the law, who is beneficent, who is merciful, who will bow down to the God that will evolve him to perfection. I want him guided on the right path. I want him guided to the path of the favor of God. And I keep on saying it and I keep on thinking it until I start fashioning a baby after the workings and the attributes of God. Do you hear what I'm saying? And you start talking to the baby when you know that life is there. Don't wait till it's born. Start talking now. Are you listening? Sound travels on water, brother. The baby's in a bag of water and ears developed that can hear. Eyes are not yet developed that can see, but the ear can hear. Talk to the baby in the womb. Recite the Quran to it. Recite the words of God to it. Recite your love for the child and your joy at having this new life and the opportunity to make a difference in the world. And keep on saying it. And don't let nothing around you cause you to become negative. Even if it's a negative circumstance, 
exalt yourself over it with a positive attitude. Yes. Though yesterday, feeling down, yet today when I speak the word of God, I'm in a positive frame of mind so that the negativity of circumstances will not interfere with the positive nature of the word of God as I bring and make a conception into the womb of the minds of men and women and make them pregnant with the word of life. You understand? Yes, sir. Talk to the child while it is in the womb. Teach it. Read to it. Not silly fairy tales. Read to it. And read to it the most beautiful narratives, the most beautiful stories, the most beautiful attributes. Read it into the child. Write on the paper of the child's mind. Stamp his mind with your heartfelt desires for God and bring forth a child in the image and likeness of God. And as a man, you do this. You hold a hand and walk with her unashamed because she's in the most beautiful stage of her life. She's bringing forth new life that may save the world from its wretched self. Walk with her. And as she loses shape here, you reform the shape here. And make sure that all harmful influences are kept from her mind. Don't let her go to funerals because she shouldn't be thinking on death when she's making life. Even if it's Funerals of dear ones. Say, baby, it's better to remember why you alive. Don't bring the pregnant woman around death and grieving people. This is what the messenger taught. Say, sweetheart, you stay at home and think on good things. Think on the good things of the life that has just gone by. But don't go where people are screaming and hollering and falling out and acting a fool. Because all of us got to die. Don't go around people that just play games with death. That's right. To pacify themselves and their mistreatment of the one that is departed. That's right. Stay home, baby. You making new life. I would take you to the movie, but it's unfit for you to see. I want you to see good things so you can bring forth a good child. And that's the second stage. But the third stage is the stage of nursing. Anybody that takes a baby from the breast of its mother is committing a crime against humanity because a cow can't bring up a human being. And let me just help you with this last thought. And I'm so full, I'm telling you, I have to stop. Otherwise, look. By the help of Almighty God, Allah, I want you to see that the white man has perfected the science of chemistry. Yes, sir. He understands how to make a, chemis- a, 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 a chemical pill, put it in you, and you become happy. Even though all the conditions around you are terribly sad, you just take this pill. Yes, sir. How do you feel? Oh, I, I, I feel great. Oh, isn't it wonderful? Yes, sir. I'm so happy. Then he got another pill. All right. He can drop on you as a downer. Yes. <laughs> he got another thing he can put on you, make you tell the truth even if you want to lie. Yes, sir. That's what he's got. He's got. And what you need to know is that your brain is a chemistry factory. Come on. Yes, it works with the liver. And if you want to be happy, if you think on the right kind of thoughts, you produce the chemistry that will send you up. If you want to produce thoughts that will put you on a downer, just keep thinking on negative things. And before you know it, you get weak. That's the way I was yesterday. It was a matter of fact, hey, I'm thinking these terrible thoughts. Your mood shifts are due to the chemical changes in your body, due to the thoughts that course through your veins, your brain rather. And this is why in your lessons, in question number eight of lesson number two, the Honorable Elijah Muhammad talks about 
water being drawn up from the earth's surface yeah. and gets into currents that are very swift and changeable. Right. See, and when you get in a cold current, it's swift and changeable. Just like that, it can switch back and forth to coldness or to warmness. And that's the way the brain is. That's the way the mind is, because the brain is water. And when you put the wrong current on a brain, it can freeze it. There's a man that was so warm and loving yesterday, came in contact with somebody who was super critical or negative. Next thing you know, he's frozen and cold. He yes. start talking things out of his mouth. You say, man, ain't that cold? <laughs> Why is it cold? Because a cold mind spoke it. Yeah. But just as that mind can thaw out and you put it in a warm current, get it around some people that got life in them. Yeah. You understand? So when you got a woman that's pregnant, you keep her in warm currents. Yeah. You keep warm currents rotating around her brain. Huh? And then when she's produced the baby, don't change on, on her. When she produced the baby, you know she got to watch out for the baby. Yes, sir. That's right. I know you want to get to her, brother, but you know what I mean? You... <laughs> <laughs> the baby come first. That's right, that's right. I know how it is. You want one breast while the baby got another. I understand. <laughs> but, but brother, the milk ain't for us. The milk is for the baby. <laughs> <laughs> Excuse me. Come on. I don't want to sound vulgar. But boy, I was jealous of my first child. My first child, Bessie Jean, poor thing. I, I got my pretty wife. This baby's here. I want to talk to my wife. The baby cries. I want my wife. The baby cries. Neither. She looking after the baby and a big baby laying up in the bed beside her crying. Yeah. <laughs> hey, brothers, we got to grow up. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. <laughs> we got to recognize that that new life is here. Yeah. And that baby needs the attention of the mother. And you got to say, oh, what the hell is this? Every time that damn baby cry, you, you jumping up in the middle of the night uh, 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 and ain't paying me no damn attention. <laughs> then a fight breaks out. She got to nurse the baby. So when she put the nipple in the baby's mouth, she's so upset. The chemistry of her mind changed. It's now in the blood. It's now in the milk. And the baby drinking the milk of rejection of you because you act like a damn fool. Brother, 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 the woman is the cooperator with God. Let me tell you, when you're pregnant, sister, don't you think about no damn cow taking care of your yes, baby sir. or no formula called Similac. Yes, Come on. Do you hear me, woman? Yes, sir. Well, well, I, I, if I nurse, I lose my form. No, you lose your form when you don't nurse. You killing the, 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 the milk. You hurt yourself because nature has a way through the sucking process, you know, the drawing process is pulling your womb back into place. It's causing you to heal. It's a healing between the mother and the baby and it's a bonding period. You healing on the inside. The baby is being bonded to the mother through the milk that's in the breast. So if you continue to think good thoughts, right thoughts, the energy, the chemistry of that good thought is right on in. Now you're reinforcing what you put in the, yes. in the baby as you wrote on the page of the brain as you were forming the brain. Now you're feeding it and developing it. You foster an atmosphere of love. Come on. And before you know it, you got a giant that will make you like Mary. Every time we talk about Jesus, we talk about Mary. And every time the world talks about your children, they're going to talk about you because you will make yourself remembered by what you produce. Come on, black woman. This is your day. This is your time. God is with you to bless your womb and fill you with his spirit that you will produce spirit-filled children, children of great vision. Prepare yourself. Come on, brothers. Take another look at her. And when you go home and you get in an argument, before you rock her jaw, think about who rocks the crib. Teach, minister. Yeah. Good job.
Beautiful. It's better to walk out and say, oh, I can't handle it. That's true. I'll just go to the cool off. All right. But don't beat her. That's right. Because if you beat her, God will impress something on you that will make you feel the weight of punishment for interfering with the womb that is his cooperator in bringing new life. May Allah bless you. May Allah keep you. May Allah help each of us to understand our value as men, our value as women. May Allah bless you to start preparing now, cleaning up your life to bring forth onto this earth the giants that will rectify the condition that slavery and the oppression of white people has put us under. Thank you for listening as I greet you in peace. Assalamu alaikum. <laughs>